Social media and food photography work so well together. The modern internet is really built to take advantage of photos and, for some reason, people love taking and sharing pictures of food. It really connects people in a unique way because being able to share great food pictures on social media, whether it's for your own benefit or to help grow a business or a food blog, is a really satisfying and rewarding experience. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the different social networks that are built around sharing food pictures. And for each of these, I'll share some of my tips and the best practices for getting the most out of these networks, getting the most likes and followers, and using them in ways that are enjoyable and effective for you. So food photography and social media fit together like hand in glove. I mean, look at some of these stats. There's over 70 million photos tagged with food on Instagram, which is a stunning amount of pictures. And the food and drink category on Pinterest is one of the most popular categories. Sharing beautiful pictures and recipes of food is one of the biggest uses of Pinterest. And for me personally, social networks have been my biggest source of traffic. More than anything else, the social networks have driven more new visitors to my website, and that's why I treat them very seriously. I spend a lot of time and effort making sure that I'm delivering value to my audience through social media because it's such an important part of food photography and being a food blogger. So what are some of the reasons that you would want to use social media in conjunction with your food photography? The first is that it'll make you a better photographer. Being able to share your content with the community to get feedback, whether it's positive or negative, and to see what other people are doing is a really valuable experience. It can also help you, like social media does in general, to connect with your friends and family. You can share your pictures, people can see what you've been doing, and again, you can tell that story to the people you care about by sharing your photos through social media. It can help you integrate into the community of food photographers or those interested in your type of cooking. Beyond just your friends and family, you can meet a lot of new friends and contacts and business partners by engaging in social media. And if you're taking beautiful pictures of food, that just puts you ahead of the game and makes your account that much more engaging. And having great pictures on your account helps you build an audience. It shows people that you're really credible. And then you have a voice, whether it's your blog or whether it's your Instagram account. It's very powerful to have a lot of followers who trust your opinions on things. And social media combined with food photography can get you to that place. And as I mentioned, social media is a huge driver of traffic to my blog, so social media can help you promote your blog or your business or whatever else you're doing in conjunction with food photography. And these are just some of the many reasons why social media is really, really important. Now before we go any further, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the different photo sizes for social media. We've mentioned this several times, but I want to talk about it in a little more depth here. In the last video, we looked at exporting our files in terms of reducing the file size and the dimensions so that they're sized appropriately for the web. The good news is that with social media, you don't need to worry so much. File size is basically irrelevant because when you upload your photo, all of these websites are going to automatically compress it and resize it to their needs. So you don't have to worry about keeping it a small file size when you post to Instagram, for example. Instagram will automatically compress it so that it's a similar size to all the other pictures, and you don't have to worry so much about that. However, you don't want your pictures to be too small because they obviously can't make them bigger except by stretching them out. So while you don't need to upload huge images, you don't want to upload images that are too small. This is why I keep my pictures for social media about 700 pixels wide at a minimum. So if they need it smaller, they'll resize it. But that's a good size so that it's at full resolution depending on whatever they need to use it for. And as we mentioned, the crop and aspect ratio is very, very important. This determines, in other words, how tall your image is versus how wide it is. If it's shot in portrait mode or landscape mode, or if it's a square, because every social network kind of has a preferred size and format in this sense. So let's take a look at the different formats and which social networks prefer which type of images. First for Pinterest and Google+, it's best to post images in vertical portrait mode. 
We've talked about this before, but these images just have more real estate on the screen in Pinterest and Instagram. So if you're going to be posting to these networks, it's very important that your images are just tall as opposed to wide. But for Instagram, they have to be square. They only accept perfectly square images. Now for all the others, they usually accept portrait or landscape mode. So my recommendation is to almost always shoot your pictures in vertical portrait mode and then crop them down to meet the square size for Instagram and then just upload that portrait picture to Twitter and Facebook where they don't really care what size it is. That's what I almost always do and it works really, really well to take one picture and use it across all the social networks. So use the portrait picture for everything except Instagram where it has to be cropped down to a square. In this next section, we're going to look a little deeper at Instagram, Google+, and Pinterest. These are the three most photocentric social networks and the ones that have offered me the most benefits. So I'm going to show you a brief overview of how they work and then some best practices and some of my tips for getting the most out of each of these networks. So first up is Instagram, which is absolutely my favorite social network as a food blogger. And you can think of Instagram, if you haven't used it, it's, it's like Twitter, but with pictures. So instead of short tweets, you share pictures, and you can add a small description to these pictures. So this is the one social network that is built around pictures. Every post has to have a picture, and pictures are what it's all about. And that's why I really like this network. But these pictures must be in square format. Every picture has to be exactly as wide as it is tall and perfectly square. It doesn't accept anything else. You can try to import another picture and then it will help you crop it down to a square. And that's usually what I do. As I talked about in the last slide, I'll import my portrait style image into Instagram and then crop it down to a square within Instagram's sharing feature. Another caveat is that images can only be posted via the mobile apps. So you cannot post to Instagram from your computer. You, there's no website where you can post. There's no apps on your computer where you can post. So it's only on your iPhone or Android device that you can actually post. So if you don't have one of those, it's going to be very, very difficult to use Instagram. But it's an absolute treasure trove for food photographers. There's so many good food photographers, and it kind of inspires you to be better. It's my favorite social network. It's the one that I actually really enjoy using, and I love looking at other people's pictures, getting inspired to make different things and to take better pictures, and I love interacting with the community. So definitely follow me at One Ingredient Chef on Instagram. I would love to connect with you. It's a, it's a fantastic place to become a better food photographer and to kind of reap the rewards of the good pictures you take. I absolutely love it. Now, how do you get the most out of Instagram? If you're new to Instagram or you haven't really gotten too much success out of it, what can you do to get more followers, to get more likes, and to have a more rewarding experience overall? The first thing I would say is only share your best work on Instagram. It's not the place to post five or six pictures at a time of different angles of one photo shoot. Just pick the one really, really good picture and share that. Maybe once a day or at most twice a day, but it's not the kind of network that's receptive to a whole lot of content. People will unfollow you if you post like 40 pictures a day and they're all terrible. Or even if they're decent, they kind of get annoyed. So I try to limit it at most to about one picture a day. So only share your best stuff. Also, this may come as no surprise if you've watched the previous videos, but I hate built-in filters. So the filters that make your pictures look like retro and interesting and crazy don't work so well for food photos. It's fine for your selfies, but when you're taking pictures of food, make them look natural and avoid the filters that Instagram allows you to put on your pictures. Third, and probably most importantly, is to use a lot of hashtags. Hashtags are what people use to search for different terms. So if you put these at the end of your, your post description, then this picture will show up in the searches for each of those terms. So I actually have a list that I copy and paste every time uh, that are centered around vegan food sharing, which is my specialty. So when people search for these terms, my pictures will show up. So it's, it's perfectly acceptable to post like 20 or 30 tags along with your picture to get more exposure. And I notice that when I do post these, 
I get a lot more likes on my picture. I get a lot more followers as well because I'm exposed to a lot more people. So may, find a list of the popular tags online, search for popular Instagram tags, and then find the ones that apply to your type of photography, and then make sure you add those onto your picture, and you'll see a big jump in the number of likes and followers you get. Also interact with the community, and this is general advice for all social media, is that you have to be social. So follow people, like their pictures, comment on their pictures. They and their followers will then be more likely to follow you back. So if you want to grow and you want to become an integral part of the Instagram community, you have to put the work in, in, in being social and connecting with people. Another way to gain more exposure is to search for a term. Like for me, it's often vegan because I cook vegan food. And then I will like a lot of the pictures in that search term. So these are people I'm probably not following, but I'll just go to their pictures and click the heart to like them, and I'll like the pictures that I like, I'll pass by the ones I don't, and then when I like their pictures, they see me, and that helps me gain more exposure. So use this to your advantage. Find search terms and like pictures to get a lot more exposure. The second social network I use a lot for food photography is Google+. It's kind of the new kid on the block. It's a lot like Facebook. Uh, but it's more centered around photos, and there's a few differences that we'll talk about. It is a lot newer and smaller, but the level of engagement is much higher. You'll get a lot more people really connecting with you on Google+, at least in my experience, than you will on something like Facebook or Twitter. So it's more about the quality than it is about the quantity. You won't have millions of followers like you could on Twitter, but the people who follow you will care a lot more. And unlike Facebook that uses friends, Google Plus has circles, so you make different circles and you can add people and remove them from your circles rather than your friends list. And that's one of the key features of this network. You can also post in very flexible ways, and that's one of my favorite things. So you can post in multiple formats. You can have text, links, videos, and photos. And you can combine these together. So I'll often post a picture along with a description of what the food is and where they can find the recipe back on my website. And it's a really well-designed network. I like it a lot and I hope it continues to grow. So how can you get the most out of Google Plus? My absolute number one tip for using Google Plus is to join the communities. Communities are kind of like Facebook groups if you use those. They are a group of people organized around a certain topic. The advantage on Google Plus communities is that you have direct access to all of the other people. It's like second best to actually getting them to follow you because when you post something into a community, it shows up on their feed. So I'm a member of the vegan communities on Google Plus and I post my recipes. So all the other people, there's like 4,000 in these groups, all of them see my recipes and my posts on Google Plus when I post in that community. So I have direct access to all these people. And as a food photographer, there's plenty of food photography communities you can share your posts there. You can share your food in the recipe section if you do have a food blog and you're doing that kind of photography. So join the communities. Get to know the people in the community, add value, and share your content. It will get noticed there almost immediately, whereas it can take you a long time to naturally build a list of followers on your own. Within these communities, especially the food photography ones, share your pictures. By sharing, you'll get people to comment on your pictures if it's a food photography community where they're giving feedback, and that'll help you grow as a photographer. The community is there to help you. So share your photos, and you'll get a lot of feedback that you can use to develop your skills. And as with all social networks, interact with the community. Leave comments and plus ones regularly on other people's content, and you'll notice that they start doing the same for you, and they'll share your content with their followers and help you grow if you're willing to put in the time to be a part of the community. Finally, if you really want to get into Google+, which I would recommend, I think it's the next social network that's really going to be successful, Guy Kawasaki, who's a social media expert, has a free book you can download that goes really in-depth on how to get the most out of Google+. And I've provided a link in this video description to a download page for that book. If you really want to invest the time in this network, I would recommend it, and that book is a great place to start. Pinterest is the final social network that's really centered around pictures and that I use a lot for food photography. On Pinterest, you pin 
pictures of things that you want to collect on boards. So your pins go on your boards. You can have multiple boards and on those boards you can have multiple pins and they help you collect things. Um, it's a predominantly female user base. Food and fashion are certainly the biggest topics. So it's an absolute gold mine for food photographers and food bloggers. Almost every food blogger I know gets more traffic from Pinterest than every other source combined. And it's worth paying attention to because your content on Pinterest can really go viral. The way it's set up is you pin something or someone else pins something and then their followers see that and they can also repin it onto their board as well and then their followers see it and they can repin it onto their boards. So that's how pictures can get thousands and thousands or even hundreds of thousands of pins is because one popular influential person will pin it and then all of their followers pin it as well and then their followers pin it and on and on it goes. And the value of Pinterest is that you can link right back to your content from the pin so people see it on Pinterest, click the link and go back to your site and that's how it drives tons of traffic to food blogs. To get the most out of Pinterest, we've talked about this multiple times now, but use tall portrait images as opposed to wide images. And we won't go over why anymore, I'm sure you get it by now. Also link your pins back to your original source. This is important because most food pins link back to the recipe on the food blogger's website. So if you do have a website or a source, make sure you're linking back to that source directly from the pin. That way when people see it, they can go back to your website or if people repin it, it will still link back to your website. So make sure there's that connection there so that you get the traffic and the rewards from the pin if you have a food blog. Another thing I do, which is very similar to the communities on Google+, Plus, is I join group submission boards because pin boards can have more than one author. So there's some like this one that have many thousands of followers. I got invited to pin on this one. So I share my pins on my own boards, but also on the submission board. And that way my pins get immediate exposure to all the people that follow this board as well as my own. There's also another lecture on the science behind successful Pinterest pictures that's coming up right after this one. So to get the most out of Pinterest, I would also certainly recommend watching that lecture. Now what about Twitter and Facebook? I've called those the other social networks and that's kind of a funny name considering that they are the two largest social networks. But when it comes to photos, they aren't quite as captivating or powerful or useful as the three we've just talked about. Now don't get me wrong, I share all of my recipes and my pictures on these networks as well. They're just a little more basic. You know, you post a picture and it's there. I haven't gotten as much traction on these networks. It's not that it's impossible. They're just not my favorites. I don't use them as much. And I think the other three are much more compelling and dynamic for food photography. And that is our purpose here. So use these networks. There's plenty of other tutorials on how to use them and how to get the most out of them. I couldn't add a lot to that here. But use them. Uh, but I wouldn't expect the kind of results and the kind of depth that you can get from Pinterest and Instagram and Google Plus on Twitter and Facebook. Another interesting consideration is if you're using a Lightroom to edit your pictures, and I hope you are, how do you get them from Lightroom onto social media? First, you would export your pictures from Lightroom, and that's a video we've covered already, and that's fairly straightforward. From there, you can simply go to your web browser to share it on Google Plus, Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. The challenge is Instagram, because remember, you can only share from Instagram or from your mobile device, your iPhone or your Android app. So how do you get your pictures from Lightroom to your phone to the app so that they can be shared? And there's a few ways of doing this. The way that I would recommend is emailing the pictures to yourself. It's a little bit cluttered and cumbersome, but I'll take the picture, I'll email it to myself from my computer, then I'll open it on my phone, save it to my camera roll, and it'll be there to share on Instagram from the camera roll. So email is probably the easiest way. It is a little cumbersome, uh, but there's really just no way around that. If you want to share great pictures that get a lot more likes on Instagram, it's worth the extra two minutes to email it to yourself and save it to your camera roll on your phone. 
I've spent a lot of time learning about social media, reading books, watching videos, but the thing that's helped me the most is just exploring. I'll go to the website and I'll just dive in and start connecting. It's kind of like a party. You walk into the door and you don't sit there in the corner trying to assess how everybody's moving and what's happening and then plan your moves. Just dive in and go start talking to people. It's a social network. So be social, have fun, and explore it. The other thing that's really important is to have fun with social media. Use the networks that interest you in the ways that interest you. You don't have to do everything. I don't use Twitter and Facebook very much because I don't like them. I don't have fun on those networks like I do on Instagram. And that shows. I have a lot more followers on Instagram than I do on the other social networks because I enjoy it. So go have fun, explore these networks, and make sure that it's an enjoyable experience if you're going to take your time to get involved sharing your food photographs on social media.